Hey, it's New Year. Welcome to episode 12 of the official Nerd Talk podcast at Geek Speak. I am your host, Sean. And join as always is my crazy and rowdy quarantined co-host, Josh Rudy Rudolph. This is the podcast where we watch movies, make movies, play games, and more. What else can you ask for? How was your holiday slash New Year, Josh? Well, it started out okay, I guess. Uh, I worked during Spider-Man No Way Home, so that was interesting. Uh, Christmas happened, more work, the New Year's, and then I have COVID now. So that's been fun. New Year, it's 2022. That feels wrong to say. It f- yeah. How do you feel about that, Josh? Yeah. These past two years, I don't... How have they been two years? Well, you're doing well, though, over, besides the COVID part? Aside from that, I'm chill. I've been watching a lot of Witcher stuff, so that's been neat. Are you ready to get back into podcast again? Hell yes. Mary Chrysler, everyone. I hope you all have listened to how to get... What? Uh-huh. I hope you all... Uh-huh. <laughs> I hope everyone who listened has had a good holiday break and some rewind time with fa- no, not rewind, unwind time with family. Ha! It's rewind time. That's YouTube stuff with Will Smith. Yeah, it was ah uh, wild. But I hope you all had a good holiday time with your families or friends or stayed safe, quarantined in your room like Josh right now. Please stay safe if you can. Omicron is uh itch bay. What? <laughs> Omicron, the, the variant, I used Pig Latin to say a bad word. Oh, I Josh got is, you. Josh is tired. Look, my body is fighting against me right now. It's been something. So in this podcast, every episode we go through a different Disney Channel original movie or DCOM for short. Uh, and we'll see how in a short period of time, the biggest media company on earth, Disney, caters towards solely children with a large sample size. So we'll see any quality changes, etc. And we accidentally just skipped a film last time. Yeah, that was that was my bad. I'm the one that keeps track of which ones we're supposed to watch. And I mistakenly said we need to watch Giant Tsunami next. That wasn't the case. We needed to watch Smart House. But for some reason, my brain skipped over that. But now we're doing Smart House this week. And if you are curious about what I thought about Giant Tsunami, it, spoiler alert, we didn't have a lot of thoughts, honestly. Uh, go to the last yeah. episode. That's a weird day, man. It's the new year. This is we're not I'm not used to this anymore. It's not a, a full year of our podcast, but it's like, you know, it's it's we've had a lot of time now. Yeah. We're in the groove. It's a new year for us. The groove. <sighs> so we watched a movie called Smart House, Josh. We did. What did you think about this movie? Yeah, hold on. Before we go into yay or nay, which we do every time we say yay or nay instead of good or bad, because there is no good or bad in the film or media, it's just all subjective. But yay or nay is more uh just our own personal beliefs and feelings of the movie. But before we get into that, this movie, do you recognize that it was Leela from Futurama as Pat? At first, I was just like, wait, that can't be her. And then, like, as it kept going on, I'm like, okay, that's definitely her. Then I IMDb'd her. I was just like, oh, my God, that is Leela. Ah, very weird. Sorry, I was willing to put it up. My only note was that. <laughs> I took one note and said, Leela. And I think it's ironic because she's in the future, and then that's the house of the future. So that's kind of yeah. Fun. That might have been why she was cast, because I think Futurama had been on for like a season or two at that point. Yeah, so Josh, what is the plot of this movie? Uh, So, you know, Alexa, Siri, Google, imagine they all had like an AI baby uh, and turned into a house. Woman designs house that's very smart, hence the title, Smart House. Thank you, Uh, Josh. Boy whose mom is dead, who's taking care of the family, wins a contest to win said uh, Smart House. They go live there. It's all fun and games, but then uh, the boy, the boy's father is dating the person that that created the Smart House. He's like, no, no, no stepmom for me. I want a virtual stepmom instead. And then he programs mommy things into the house. Uh, The house starts becoming like a mom. It starts going wild and crazy. Leela is very interesting in this. It's a time. I have questions when I watch the movie. First off, how is this 12-year-old able to win a contest? How does this work? (laughs) This was the early 2000s when all you had to do was just uh, enter the same things a bunch of like 50,000 times and then you'll just win. What's funny to me, uh, when, when they were going to pick the winner, it was just like, wow, we have 80,000 entries. I'm like, hold on a second. A smart house that could do everything for you, and you only had 80,000 entries? No, 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 no. You would have millions of entries to go through. Like, what? 
Also, that kid was the most annoying child. Ben. Oh, uh, yeah. He's awful. He's insufferable. I thought he, he, was a, he was a normal kid, but he was an idiot. Don't replace my mom. I'll replace my mom. <laughs> yeah, that was the weirdest thing about the movie. I'm like, hold on, you don't want a new mom, but you're going to make the house your new mom instead. What? It's, it's still a mom. You still want a, a new mom that's just not a physical person for your to make your dad happy. Dead hair trope for sure. This time it was the mom. Sometimes it could be the dad. It varies. I will say one of the weirdest things about this movie is that LeVar Burton from Star Trek The Next Generation directed this movie. And to me, that is so random for that to ha- for that to happen. I know him from Reading Rainbow. Just saying. I'm that oh, kind of kid. Reading, I forgot about Reading Rainbow. <laughs> oh my god oh that's a trip isn't it great though oh that's crazy yeah he did a decent job too it's a pretty fun film i hate it on disney plus they it's a four by three film they squished it into 16 by nine by cutting off the top and bottom oh my god any close-up looks like that the camera was zoomed in too much and the dp was just like eh, it's fine like it's all framed terribly because it because they zoomed it in so much I wish you didn't go evil or like, insane because I thought the idea of this, the themes could have been like, just you could still the same things of don't overlap technology and that kind of idea and all the same ideas without making her like outright almost villainous by trying to make a tornado in the house. What's interesting about that, that didn't happen until like the last 15 minutes of the movie, which is weird. Cause like before then she was starting to become more like, uh, like an overbearing bomb, but she wasn't a villain per se, but then the last 15 minutes happened and she just went like full villain. I will say this is probably the best outcome possible for artificial intelligence of, Oh, I'm bad. My bad. Bye guys. Back to normal. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't go full terminator on them, which is funny. I will. It's, I will say throughout this movie, especially at the end, when she creates the like hologram version of herself, there's times where the characters are like, Oh no, what did we do? She's right in front of us. She's a hologram. You can run right through her. You know, I didn't even think about that at all. Like, I exactly. Really shit, just like, cause I saw a person. I'm like, ah, you can't, you can't escape now. Oh wait, you're basically a ghost. Didn't think about that. So just now, Josh, thank you. I feel dumb. Right. When the creator of the smart house is trying to break into the control room to fix everything, Leela just like makes herself 10 feet tall. And like the creator is so scared of her. But I'm like, again, she's a hologram. She can't touch you. Also, we're saying Leela, the smart house's name is Pat. Uh, I think it's personal something, something. I don't Correct. Know. Yeah. I'm good at remembering stuff. I watched it yesterday. Soon, soon time? Sometimes so I wonder what? I can't. Hmm, soon what? time. <laughs> soon time. I have mental notes right for this movie because there's some weird things I want to talk about. Uh, specifically, this bully's hair. <laughs> it's so bad. It's such a late 90s, early 2000s haircut. I mean, Ben's hair isn't great either. No. But it's not, ben, it's... Ben's, I hate Ben's hair because I'm just like, why did anyone at that time think that was a cool haircut? What made me fall in love with the dad as a character like, immediately, um, it's very smart they did this because you, like, you need to like this dad. As like going into this, they had him try his best with his daughter's hair. Yeah. And twice and he was like trying to fix it. And once it didn't work the way, he's like, I'll try my best. And she got mad at him. And you can see that moment of he really wants to be a good, like you can see the effort. And a lot of dads struggle with like, especially girls' hair and even putting an effort to try and get it right. Whereas he tried two different hairstyles and couldn't do them right. And I, I loved that scene. It's it was so fascinating to be seeing this movie and the last one we watched was uh, Giant Tsunami where I hate the dad in that one because he was just, just like very unrealistic in how he was written, but here like this dad is one of the most realistic dads I've seen in a kids movie in a while. It's crazy. I love it so much. I think that actor was the dad from Home Alone three. I think if I'm remembering correctly, just a random thought in my head. I've never seen Home Alone three. So. Ah, good. Don't bad movie. <laughs> You mean a nay, Josh? You know our rules. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm sick. I'm al- I'm allowed to make mistakes. How many times did you teach, teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> Apparently, every time. <laughs> I think it's on the better end, but not on the highest tier yet of our decom list. Yeah, because it's fun. It's relaxing. You can just put on it and relax and have fun and chill out. 
I'm going through my notes of the movie uh, just to see like any random things. There's a part where, uh, when we first meet the bully and he's uh, bullying one of the uh, kids. The kid, what's the, I can't remember what the kid says, but the, the bully says, how can I be hurting myself when I'm spending time hurting you? And then shoves him in a locker. Is that really what he says? That is really what he says. Word for word. Fascinating. Fascinating. Oh, yay or nay, Josh? I think I'll give it a yay. Yeah, me too. I think it's fun. I enjoy my time watching this. That's always a good thing. That's what you want for a movie, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, okay, I will say a moment that made me laugh out loud. I I have no idea if this was actually fully intentional, but when Ben uh, sees the girl that he likes for the first time, there's literal harps like playing. The music like goes into that whole like real lovey dovey kind of music of just like harps, angelic choir. It's just like okay, that's hilarious. <laughs> I do like how she's written though, genuinely. Because it's not like they have a lot of chemistry, but she's written kind of like a middle school girl. Yeah. Like, her interest in him, it feels like a bit of early comic book MJ. And I appreciate, yeah. or like, Spectacular Spider-Man, MJ Day One kind of thing. Yeah. I like that. It worked. But- I thought that Angie was actually a non... Angie as a character was tolerable, which is great from a small child character. Yeah, she could have been written a lot worse. But she very <laughs> much felt like a little sister. She could have been performed a lot worse, too. Yeah. I will say the dialogue for her was a little very much written for an adult. There's the only thing she said that was basically like, ah, you rapscallion G. Willikers. I don't know what it actually was. This is an 80-year-old man writing this dialogue here. What are you? No child yeah. says these things. But she was fun. And I like that she actually cared about her dad. <laughs> yeah. There's Angie, the little sister. Ben, the medium-sized boy. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> I meant to say like, middle school boy <laughs> and medium age, but me- there's no such thing as medium age. I don't know what that meant. <laughs> that's that's how we should refer to all middle schoolers, medium sized children. <laughs> there's the uh, there's the large size, which is teenager. There's the smalls with our children and medium size to middle school. <laughs> uh, anyway, so Angie's a small child. Ben is the again, medium sized boy. And then there's their dad and they have a dead mom who's never dressed how she died or anything, but she's just dead. And like you said earlier, the plot, Sarah is her name who makes this and decides this smart house with a guy who's never brought up again. Kind he he keeps appearing. And I thought that like, at first that he'd be more important or that he was like her boyfriend or something. Nah, he's just there. Yep. First of all, the dad agrees to visit this house because of the picture of the creator of the house. Very weird. He's like, ah, she's hot. Let's go there. I'm like, that's horny. Calm down on Maine. Hey, bud. Look, we, we all know how long it's been since he last dated. That's true. Apparently, it's the entire time because his son. But so his son doesn't like the idea of him dating anyone or being with anyone because he's like, you can't replace mom. And like, he's not trying to replace you. He's just trying to get some fun times. But that scene with Ben and his dad talking about Ben, his dad forgetting his mom, essentially, and just having that conversation, I thought it was like surprisingly like well done. I've never really seen a DCOM really like have a scene like that. I was surprised at how well done it was. Yeah, it was good. Any last minute thoughts about this? Honestly, it held up better than I thought that it was going to. I'd seen bits and pieces of it when I was a kid. I don't know if I ever like watched the entire thing, but yeah, it held up better than I remembered it. I had never seen it before. And it was fun. It's a little weird. There's some, definitely some nonsense stuff. Oh, completely. I'm more questioning about the floor of how, like, you know, it okay. has, like, the, about how it can absorb stuff. I'm just like, if it can absorb stuff, can it also absorb the humans on it? Like, where does it go? Does it disintegrate things? What happens here? Yes. I could buy it when it was liquids. When yeah, it was liquids solid made objects, more sense. I, it was nonsense to me. Like, this is... Like when you it brought down things like plates in the floor, like this is not how matter works. That didn't answer the, the freaking question. <laughs> yeah, this is this is fun. Yep, cool. Moving on, Josh. People died. That is true. Way more th- than you'd want. <laughs> you one is more than you'd want, but yes, legend herself, Betty White, passed away. Very sad on New Year's Eve. Right. So I right be- right before her hundredth birthday. <sighs> I, uh, I don't know words can describe the impact she had on the world. Correct. She was literally older than sliced bread, Josh. That is very weird to think about. 
Um, and also rest in peace to Sidney Poitier. Poitier, Poitier? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was the first black man to ever win an Oscar for Best Actor. And that's incredible. He's had a very long history of work. Also, I didn't know he was in David and Lisa, which is a movie that play my high school did. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I have not seen any of his films really because they came out mostly in the like 60s, 70s time. I wasn't around then. His latest film ever was a TV movie in 2001. So I hadn't really, he was a bit before my time, but I have great respect for everyone who does what he did. So thank you to you. On a happier, not happier news, more sad-ish news. <laughs> this right. movie started out interestingly. In fact, most news I have here is sad news in some way. Interesting, or like negative news. Cool. So Josh, one movie has been delayed for a seventh time. Oh my god. <laughs> and that is the Morbius the Living Vampire film. I fully believe that come close to April, if obviously I don't think things are going to get like uh, uh, that much better by then, that Sony is just going to just call it quits and just say, okay, just put it on digital. We just need to recover our losses because they've delayed this now more than James Bond was delayed. And that film with, I think it was delayed maybe like three times with those delays, it needed a billion dollars to break even. This has been delayed seven times over the past two years now. So how much money do they need to break even now? Because I can't even imagine at this point. <laughs> so let's break this down a bit. Oh, goody. So Morbius, is, if you don't know, is a movie with starring Jared Leto. And it's about a Spider-Man villain in the Sony Spider-Man universe that has nothing to do with Spider-Man. What might now with Andrew's future? Who knows? Who, who knows? Because <laughs> uh, people love Andrew Garfield again. Because I've been loving him for like 10 years, people. But whatever. It was really going to come out on July 10th, 2020. Then COVID had other ideas. Then it was delayed a few more months to July 31st. And then March 19th of 2021. And then October 8th, 2021. And now then January 21st, 2022. And then to January 28th. And then now it's been moved to April. Literally seven times. I get what. Do they really think that there's going to be that huge of an audience for this movie? Doesn't matter. Right now, it's not safe. No, I'm I'm fully aware. But like taking that aside, like they've delayed this movie so much, they could have released it back in October of 2021, and like like right around the same time as Venom. So I I don't know. I don't, know. I, I don't have my thoughts on this movie. Just are there. If it comes out, cool. I guess I'll see it. If it doesn't, oh no. I genuinely like Morbius the character a lot, and it looks interesting. I could take or leave Leto at this point. He's fine. But I'm intrigued by this film, and also I like Morbius, so and vampires are kind of neat, so why not? And then he's not, at least he's not sparkly. Yeah, it's true. He's not sparkly. I will say that one clip that they released of his first transformation, I it needs blood. Like, this needed to be close to an R-rated movie or like at least look a lot more violent than it does because seeing a vampire anything and just like having like slashing people like cutting them up but then like there being no blood or carnage of any kind it seems weird to me when he was in the uh, Spider-Man animated cartoon and he just had hand suckers I, I just saw a post about that literally like a minute ago <laughs> yeah it's quite interesting good show and good character in that show but fascinating there's more uh, COVID Things, Josh. Pixar staffer are truly disappointed at Disney for streaming Turning Red. So, D Turning Red, the Pixar film, is now going to be on Disney Plus instead of in theaters. That's the news. God, and Pixar is... staff are mad about it. I Why should they not be mad about it? This is their fourth film now that's been released on Disney Plus. First, it was Onward that came to theaters, but that came out right as the COVID shutdowns were happening. So, like, that was just like, okay, that was kind of like, you kind of had to and then soul was uh, put on disney plus and like at that point it's just like okay fine but then luca was going to come to theaters and then disney was just like well let's actually put it on disney plus and that's when i really started to get pissed off and now this really has me pissed off because i was really looking forward to seeing this one in theaters so i, I can completely understand why pixar is getting pissed that these films are getting released only on disney plus my girlfriend's very upset because my girlfriend's going to be in the disney college program uh, and she was going to go see our first movie in theaters there with the AMCA list. 
and what's more upsetting is the hypocrisy of them still releasing these Marvel movies and these Star Wars movies and these other stuff in the theaters right now, but not these. It's like pick a side. Yeah, I think it's because like this is a original that Soul, uh, Luca, and Turning Red are all original Pixar films. They are not based on anything before, but the Buzz Lightyear movie you know, has that whole Toy Story fan base to follow up on. And that's not going to release until June, but I doubt they're going to change that from an only theater release. And if they do change it, it would be only theaters and then the $30 Disney Plus thing. Turning Red doesn't even have that um, luxury. It's just now you're just watching for free. They're not going to even make a profit off of it. Even like The Good Dinosaur, which is a Pixar film not many people have seen, still did pretty decent at the box office. Oh, wait, first off, yeah, your nail on the Morbius being delayed news. Can I give an indifference all around? No. <laughs> Fine, I'll give it. Every episode, Josh. Do I, do I give it a yay that I'm fine with it being delayed? Or do I give it a nay I'm mad about it being delayed? I'll give it a nay I'm mad about it being delayed because that means I have to keep seeing the trailers. <laughs> I'm going to give it a nay because I'm mad at people not getting COVID together yet. Not taking out, getting vaccinated and not being <laughs> safe. For a second, I thought you were just about to say I'm mad that people haven't gotten COVID yet. I'm like, hold on a second. No, no, there. like not getting COVID, COVID <laughs> short together. Yeah. Because that way we could be out and we would not have a delay. If people had COVID under control, what would happen? You guys get vaccinated. I'm I'm not trying to be political, but like this shouldn't be political. I'll be political because I have COVID myself. Uh, I'm fully vaccinated and I have the booster. My symptoms is pretty much it's just a really bad cold. So get the vaccine, people, because if I didn't have the vaccine and the booster, I would be in incredible pain. It would probably be in the hospital right now. I'm at home and I I'm not feeling great, but I could feel a lot worse. If you don't have the vaccine yet, please do yourself a favor and get the vaccine because Omicron is rampaging right now. It's, and it's bad. Please do yourself a favor, get the vaccine. Okay. So other weird news, the CW might get sold. Which is just, what's more fascinating about hearing this is hearing that apparently it hasn't been profitable for years, which blows my mind considering like all the dc shows that they've made for it um you've got the vampire diaries riverdale uh smallville like all these giant shows that ran for multiple seasons over multiple years and apparently hasn't been profitable for years which is insane so the article from deadline says the cw ceo mark pedowitz confirms warner media and viacom cbs exploring strategic opportunities as majority stake in network is shopped with next star among suitors update so basically now he's commented that saying that cw might get a new majority owner 15 years after the broadcast network's launch its co-parents viacom and warner media uh warner bros are considering a, a, a controlling stake sale sources confirmed to deadline next target media group which is the cw's largest affiliate group following this acquisition of a tribune um is believed to be among interested in buyers so yes we are probably gonna have a, everything move on over i don't really know what i, I would give this <laughs> i'm curious so give it a yay i'll get i'll give it a yay i don't really watch anything from the cw so this doesn't really affect me so i i'll give it a yay because i'm curious i used to watch the arrowverse religiously constantly and then i stopped caring because they all got really bad and yeah. that's why i haven't even begun <laughs> to watch those i will say the first season you First few seasons of almost every other show is, is good. But then stop. Speaking of things happening. <laughs> things are wait, things are happening? Crazy. Or in secret. Oh. So the Golden Globes happened. <laughs> that oh my god, that was so weird. <laughs> so basically what happened according to Vogue. The Golden Globes happened in secret in private. What that was which is just insane. They have all the Vogue released all the winners and all the nominees and all of that. Did you hear that? I'm looking at this now. Apparently, the only celebrities that attended the ceremony were Jamie Lee Curtis and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh my god, I love that. Which is just insane. Hey, but like, why are they the white? The fact that 
And that's the thing about this whole thing is that rather than address the problems that have been, you know, criticized at the Golden Globes, the people that run it over the past couple of years, instead of actually addressing those problems, they're just going to be like, we're not going to uh, show the ceremony at all. We'll, we'll still do the awards and everything, but we're not going to show it. There's so many things about this that just blows my mind. It confuses me. I will say that congrats to South Korea for getting the first ever Golden Globe for Best Actor in something. Oh, we're going to Sue. For, for Squid Game? Yes. I'm giving this a nay. This is a hard nay for me. Own up to your mistakes and get had the vent like normal. Yeah. I'm very curious. Yeah, I'm going to get a nay too. I'm very curious how this is going to affect the Oscars. Because for the past several years now, the Oscars haven't had a host. Uh, so... Are they going to follow in the Golden Globes footsteps and not show a ceremony at all? Which, if the Oscars do that, then what's the point of doing any of this at all? If you're not going to even have the ceremony for people to watch, it just becomes a van- it becomes even more of a vanity thing at that point to have the ceremony, but no one knows about it. Speaking of things, leaving things, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't have segues this time. Uh, what are segues? Ben Affleck on the tender bar. The last duel and saying goodbye to IP content in an interview with um, the playlist. The main part of this news I'm going to talk about is that in this interview, he is trying to move, Ben Affleck says he's going to try to move, move away from more IP type films, which is very uh, not necessarily a bad idea, just a good your own choices. One thing I've noted in this interview is he said that the Flash will be his last time as the Batman officially, which to be fair, he did say that before, but I believe it this time again. So who knows? I think that for this to be his last time as Batman makes a lot of sense to get actual good finality with the character. And it's not weird for him to say that he's moving away from IP stuff, because if you look at most of his career, most of what he's done has been a lot more original stuff than IP stuff. Right. He also said that he's not upset by the last duel bombing. He said, I don't I don't obviously gauge success by like numbers or money. He just enjoys doing things. That's really cool. I like that. Yep. Yeah. 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 Ben Affleck. This this whole article, I guess, this whole interview about him moving moving away from IP films, including I, the Flash. I, I I give it a yeah. I I like finality for characters and things. Yeah, I'm disappointed about the Batman thing, but also like I I don't care. I want the DC universe restart. Give it like five ten years and go again and make a cohesive universe and make it like the MCU, but be different. Like that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Have the same idea of just have films to go together. That's not a, a hard idea. I get only MCU has done it so far, but they literally gave you a blueprint. On paper, it's not a hard blueprint to follow. Obviously, like, you know, enacting it is a very difficult thing to do. But on paper, playing it out ahead of time is not a difficult thing. Find someone to trust and get them like Kevin Feige like role. <laughs> Me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess overall, yay, because I like the idea of more original content that's less franchise based as well. I'm trying to see, is he does Ben Affleck have anything in plans for directing? I thought that he did. I'm DB, work for me. Hey Josh, you've yes. seen Edgar Wright films. I have. He has some good ones, right? He does. I've never seen a bad one. Have you seen uh, a film called Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? I think I have. Crazy. It's being made a uh, movie, but the Scott Pilgrim IP is being made into an anime on Netflix based on the original comics. I did hear about that. With I'm the very creator curious. going to be writing and producing it. Okay, that's that's neat. I'm because I haven't read the the comics themselves, but from like the movie and like from stills I've seen, I love the art style of it. So I'm very curious what the animation uh, for the show is going to be like. Yeah, it looks. Based on my seeds by imagery, so like concept art and stuff. Basically, the it looks like it'd be very cool and very faithful. But the hit graphic novel series that was adapted to Edgar Wright vehicle is once again headed to the screen. And this time, as an anime series with creator Brian Lee O'Malley and Ben David Grabinski will write and produce this movie, the show. And that's pretty cool. It'd be really funny if they had the same uh, actors from the movie voicing the characters. It'd be fun. <laughs> I'd love that. Kieran Culkin back, please. Oh my God, yes. After also, watching uh, not another teen movie last night with Chris Evans, I want to see him do more out there roles like Scott Pilgrim again. Lucas Lee was such a fun part. Oh my god! What makes it even better is like him being Captain America because then you have Captain America. You go back and watch that and see Captain America do something like this. This is good news, I think. Yes, 
I like more content. More art's always good as a default thing. More stuff is cool. Anyway, yay. Thank you, Kotaku, for reporting this and Hollywood Reporter. Yay on that. Last news I want to say is about Spider-Man No Way Home. This is not spoilery at all, anyone. Don't worry. Go see it still. You can safely. Although I think the entire world has seen it because the news about, is about box office. This movie, not even a nationwide COVID spike, could dissuade Marvel fans from seeing this movie. So this movie has made, on its fourth consecutive weekend of being the number one box office, it had made $33 million. Basically, what this means is that this movie has made, I think, $1.2 billion, and it's it, the eighth highest gross movie ever. I'm on Box Office Mojo right now. It has made $1.5 billion. So the number's are even higher than last I checked. Cool. Yeah, so it, this is insane. Domestic uh, is the sixth highest grossing domestic yes. movie of all time. Yes. And then I'm on the New York Post article about this right now. Yeah. And then on... Uh, uh, Worldwide, it's number eight. Oh, I just see 1.5 billion. I just misread that. Cool. The movie is very fan servicey, so that's obviously a big part of this. But who cares? It's fun. You know, as much as I hated like the leaks and the rumors happening around this movie, it that wor- that was brilliant marketing for the movie. Yay yes. on the box office. Yay indeed. All right. You know what it's time for? I don't know. What time is it for? You don't tell me things anymore. That's wonderful. <laughs> this is a big boy time this is our year in review of 2021 wow josh 2021 happened it did and a lot of movies happened and media they, like games and shows that they did and we'll talk about all three mediums very soon mostly movies because more of that happened that was new that we watched i have a lot of different categories to go through basically it's be a fun little game of just saying random stuff till it works all right <laughs> I'm, I'm down for that Okay, so this year, John, well, this past year, to 2022 now, we're doing this in the future, a.k.a. the now time. Wow. I have a nay, a nay, a yay, a yay. Ready? So we're going to do a the biggest, hardest yay of the year. Not best, wow. just one that you give the one of the yay most to. The most, this deserves the yay, but not nearly as big. It just, this, this is good. You should watch it. Maybe an underdog, maybe something that no one's grounding towards much. Who knows? And then the same with the nays, the hardest nay. It doesn't mean bad. It's like it's not what you want to watch again. And okay. Then, and then your most whatever nay. Like, I wouldn't go to this again, but you can if you want to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. For your biggest yay of the year, what do you want to say? Oh, this is so tough. There's Let's so do, many. Hey, it will help say non-superhero. Will it help? I guess. Yeah. Okay, so... Hmm. Let me think. Let me think. I got. I have a list of like my favorite movies of 2021. I've got three that it's between, and it's really tough for me to choose. Just say one. You can say one of them for the second one if you want to. All right. I'll go. I'll just say. I'll say one of them. Uh, probably just because it's so recent in my mind. I'll go with Spielberg's West Side Story. All right. For my biggest yay. For if we're going non superhero y, I think a lot of people should go see or should watch at some point The Mythos versus Machines. That was that was another one that I was trying to choose between. Actually, no, I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say Free Guy. It's very fun. Free Guy was a lot of fun. Like even if you think, if you like franchise films at all, if you like these nerdy stuff, you think it'll have fun. I think it comes to Disney Plus in February, maybe. It's not the best film of the year, or even much of my favorite. But I think it's a, it's a very big yay. It's fun, guys. Go see it. My whatever yay. Like you should you should see this. It's maybe not like. The best film, maybe not my favorite film, but I think people should go see Nightmare Alley. Agreed. It's a Del Toro film, Guillermo Del Toro film, with Bradley Cooper in it, and Kate Blanchett, and Willem Dafoe, and it's an amazingly well-structured, put-together film. I think you all should go see it. If you are okay with some violence and stuff, because it's definitely th- got that. Yeah, I think it's best for that film to go in blind because I saw the trailers beforehand and it makes you think it's something, but the film is not at all. So I think going in blind can help with that. I went in blind. Um, it is it a did. remake. Yeah, it is a remake, though. So if you've seen the original, you probably know the story, too. For so mine, yeah. I think for, for mine, I'm going to go with uh, James Wan's uh, new movie, Malignant. Uh, not enough people saw that uh and the marketing is not is purposefully not the best at showing what the movie is like and for when i saw it i had no idea where it was going 
But this when the second half happens, oh my god, it's the most fun I think I've ever had at a James Bond movie. And I'm not gonna give away anything, but seek it out whenever you can. It is so much insane fun. So your medium yay is malignant. Yeah. Cool. So my medium nay, I gave it a positive rating, like more positive negative. But honestly, Halloween kills. Like, it's yeah, just we. You'll get some fun kills out of it. We already talked about this on the podcast. If you have this back and like for Halloween time, and it's just like, whatever. It's not yeah. worth the watch unless you're watching it in the finished trilogy. I think Let's it's a, it's such a it's such a filler movie. Yeah. Uh, medium nay for me. Uh, I think, I think for that, I'm going to go with Army of the Dead. I have such a conflicting relationship with that movie. There's definitely a lot of fun to to be had with it. But as soon as you try to think about the story or the characters, your brain starts to melt because it doesn't work. But I would still say seek it out because there is good things there. But overall, I would probably give it a nay. Even though, I think you gave it a positive rating, though. So that's funny. Gave, like, it, it fluctuates. It fluctuates. That's the thing. Because on Letterboxd, when I first saw it, I gave it two and a half. Then when I saw it again, I gave it a three and a half. It's very weird. Now, my hardest nay <clears throat> for me, Kissing Booth 3. Because Kissing Booth 3 is so bland to me. Like, it doesn't actually... Even It's bad, but it's not like in a bad that's... It's not offending me. Or making me actively uncomfortable. Other films can do that. True. I'm going to go with Home Sweet Home Alone. Home Sweet Home Alone is, it's so bad because it just, uh, you had the first film, which is done so well. It's so, like people don't give it the credit that it deserves for how well written and well directed it is. I'm not going to go into the whole spiel about it, but this film is just like, it's there. It's just like, aha, we're going to do things. But it's this is a terrible way of explaining it. But there's Aha, not. A, we're gonna do things. Correct. There's not a single funny joke at all in the movie. It's kind of impressive how there's not really any funny joke. Now, if you the love that, that's great. This is a personal name for him. So, it's the characters are all unlikable, especially the main kid. The idea of making the burglar sympathetic characters and then just having the shit beat out of them by this ten year old is terrible. The plot is awful the parents are terrible just everything about this movie is wrong in all the wrong ways it's i hate it for everything it stands for and <laughs> it it just it hurts like the other straight to tv home alone movies they're bad but they never really stood a chance but this was a disney plus movie it had a budget it had people that have done funny things in the past both acting wise and writing wise there's no excuse for this film to be the way that it is. And that's why it's my least favorite movie of the year. Josh loves Home Alone 1 and 2. and so Okay, I love the first one. I like, like the, second the second one. one. There's, there's a difference. I can recognize the second one has a lot of problems. My point is still that he has this attachment to these movies. And so he's extra harsh on the worser ones. Worser? Yeah, worser. Why not? Anyway, so this is, this is just our personal, like what we gravitate towards or don't gravitate towards kind of thing. Now, if we threw super superhero movies in there, things might change on our biggest yays and nays and stuff. That's true. What was the best movie villain of the year? Ooh, that is ooh tempting. I wouldn't say Michael Myers. Um, nah, I wouldn't say uh, uh, any of the Gucci's because they're all villains. Are we? Are we still keeping superhero stuff out? Yes, of this? They're, they're, in here, okay. they're in here. Oh, they're in here. Yeah, for this one. Okay, they're, they're in here for the rest of these. I wanted. I wanted oh, okay. To- okay. Because that would throw off the yays, I think, really far. far. I'm so tempted to say Jeff Goldblum in The Boss Baby 2. I've not seen it. As the best <laughs> villain. That movie is so insane. It's so insane. What about uh, the villain in Nobody? Okay, all the people he fights. I feel like we're both trying to avoid Green Goblin and No Way I Home. I am not at all. Mine's Wen Wu. Interesting. I, I, Green Goblin is not my favorite villain of the year. I love Green Goblin as a character. I understand the performance is fantastic great movie well written all that stuff i understand i I, for me he's not the best villain of the year that's all i'm saying i don't think any of those villains are the best villain of the year josh froze you can say willem defoe's green goblin if you think that no i was i was thinking i'm looking at every movie i've seen i'm trying to see if there's any that carnage these are (laughs) 
<laughs> Zool from Ghostbusters. I don't want to say who the villain in the Matrix Resurrections is, but okay. I kind of want to go for that one. Candyman. That's a strong like monster villain kind of character. This is this is tough for me. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna go with my gut. I'm gonna say Goblin Ray Goblin, No yeah. Way Home. It is everything that I wanted him to be in this movie. And I can understand your argument about it not being like a good, like like emotional villain for him for this, but I think the detachment works for this story. And I think I think that works to the story's benefit, at least in my eyes. My second choice, I'm not going to say who it was, was the Matrix. villain in the Matrix Resurrections. I uh, still you haven't it. seen, yeah, yeah, you still need to see the Matrix movies, but when you see who it is, you're going to be so delighted. Yeah, it's in the first one. I want to watch the rest. Okay, next topic on here was the best musical. Do we have like five on here? We do have. So we the musicals of this year were West Side Story, Tick Tick Boom, um, Encanto, Dear Evan Hansen. And I know there's at least one more. Am I missed in the heights? And yes, that's it. I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so then I'm gonna go for top two, uh, West Side Story and Tick Tick Boom. I'd agree. At first it was gonna be uh West Side Story and In the Heights, but then you said Tick Tick Boom. I'm like, ah, oh, it's it's I gotta put Tick Tick Boom of uh, In the Heights, even though I love it. I just rewatched Tick Tick Boom and it's just like, wow, just just wow. It's for me, it's my favorite of the year. And we did a whole episode about Tick, Tick, Boom as well. So you guys can that please go check it out. It's episode nine. We had a guest on it named Hunter Ferris. He was really cool. Go listen to that. Um, Dear Evan Hansen had a, lot, had a lot of flack because of the story, which makes sense. It's better on stage, but it's also hard. Either way. We also did talk about it in the Heisen podcast already as well. That's, well. that's a while ago. Go listen to that podcast. Uh, and Kanto is fun. Ikanto was fun. It's I've been re-listening to a lot of songs that a lot of them are bangers. I hate how every song is in my head all the time because of TikTok. Every, no one I, will stop playing We Don't Talk About Bruno. And I, can't get, I can't get those songs out of my head. <laughs> Leave it to your sister. Your sister is stronger. See if she can hang on a little longer. <sighs> That's in my head every day. Because <laughs> everyone's like, oh my god. Icon. I'm like, stop <laughs> it's like oh my god look at the trauma i have too stop it that's not good get therapy josh what is the weirdest movie of the year oh not good or bad necessarily hmm. i mean weird as in like content wise or just like interpret i think venom hmm. whatever card is pretty weird <laughs> uh, guys. that's the 2021 is pretty weird I gotta go if we're going for weird. I gotta go with Boss Baby. Uh, what is, what's the what's it actually called? But the Boss Baby Family, family business. business. That movie is one of the most insane things I have ever watched. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad, but it will never leave my head. So I should watch the first one and the second one. You will, it is the best way to experience what it's like being on drugs without having to be on drugs. That is that is how I could sell those movies to you. I mean, you've never done drugs, so it's not really the best. Argument. I don't need to do drugs to know that's what it's like. But I think for me, Venom Let Every Carnage is probably the weirdest. It's just <laughs> that movie. Oh, I love it. It's a trip. Got to say that. But you, you're going with Boss Baby 2 as the weirdest movie of the year? Yeah, it's, it's so fascinatingly weird, but it knows it. All right. Okay, what is the most fun game experience you've had this year? game experience honestly for me it's i bought the Oculus quest 2 and i've loved that from the games i've completed uh it will have to be between resident evil village uh or ratchet and clank ripped apart i loved both of those and had a very fun time with both what of those. consoles uh i played both of those on the ps5 nice i also had i, I loved i love minecraft but like they had a new update this year and they're coming out another one uh this next year and it was really fun and i've enjoyed playing in the new caves and cliffs they're really cool so that's a good gaming thing from this year if you don't like minecraft then how dare you but the caves are really fun and they do a lot of cool stuff with that and it's interesting so games are fun we like games we don't do a lot we did one game so far on this podcast kind of and there's a bracket yeah but our next episode one of our next episodes will be doing about about vr since josh now has an oculus quest 2 as well and we'll be doing the episode in vr so and you'll be able to watch that as well. It'll be fun. Yeah. 
and I might have us challenge us by having us actually play a game while we're doing the podcast in VR. We'll find out. Yeah. But that was a good. Uh, so your best gaming experience was one of those two games. They, it was it was a very fun time with both of those. Ratchet and Clank. Uh, what's it called? Unbroken. Un- Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Rift Apart. I don't like that. Okay, yeah. And then Resident Evil. Gotcha. Yes. What was the best horror of the year? You probably said Malignant, right? Uh no. Really? Uh no. For going for best horror. For me, it's a quiet place part two. <sighs> and a lot of boxes uh, says 2020 because festivals. Yeah, that was that's annoying. Uh it's probably between either that or Candyman. But if I'm gonna go with my gut, I'm gonna go with Quiet Place 2. Both good. We also talk about that on the podcast, episode three. Go watch that. Go listen wow, to that. crazy. Little plugs for our podcast. We did a lot. We talked about this year. It's crazy. That we have. And then your top three favorite superhero films of the year. This is not going to really be that difficult. Uh, no Way Home, uh, Shang-Chi, and Eternals. For me, it's No Way Home, Shang-Chi. And I'm going to be, it's either Zack Snyder's Justice League or the Suicide Squad. Because I yeah. like both those a lot, too. And I like Zack Snyder's Justice League because it's a coherent film. And <laughs> the one in theaters was not. Yeah. It's yeah, too for, long. It's too long. Put it's, it down some. That, yeah, that's that's why it's not in my top three for those because it's four hours. It's it's so much. And it, it's it can be tough for me to decide between Eternals and the Suicide Squad, but I really liked what Chloe Zhao did with Eternals. And I, that's why it, I love the characters in that movie. That's why I put it on there. Not saying what the Suicide Squad did was bad in any way. We've talked about it before, uh, at least between the two of us. I yeah. love what that I love what that film did. I love the characters in it, the action, the comedy. It's all great. But I think I I think I gravitate a little bit more towards what Eternals did than Suicide Squad. Yeah, I, I get that. What was the best? animated feature of the year to you we have uh in kanto we have um missile versus machines it's good uh ryan the last dragon yeah it's it's an easy win for missiles versus machines so luca also existed which i've I've seen you still haven't seen all the movie i still haven't finished it because it's on disney plus (gasps) the spongebob movie uh oh that that was a good vivo happened which i've not actually watched i haven't watched it either Boss Baby Family Business, which I thought you said would already come top because you already said it earlier when your biggest TA is whatever. The Adam Family 2, America the Motion Picture. We got Paw Patrol movie. You know, we actually do a lot of movies that were fun. Yeah, so basically the biggest ones we have are Ron's Gone Wrong, Luca, Mitchell Motion Machines, Vivo, Raya, Encanto, and probably Adam Family 2, Paw Patrol. Second 2 also happened. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Actually, not that bad. Uh, but yeah. I'm, yeah, it's Mitchell's versus the Machines for me. Same. I also liked Luca and Encanto and Ron's Gone Wrong. Ron's Gone yeah. Wrong had some interesting themes for the being coming out from Disney and Fox, but whatever. I will say, I'm very pissed that Mitchell's versus the Machines wasn't even nominated for a Golden Globe for MA film. Yeah, it's crazy. What was the best uh, 2021 Disney Plus show? Ooh. That includes like Star Wars, Marvel, anything else. I'm going to go with Loki. To me, that was the most... To me, that was the most fulfilling, at least for me personally, of the shows. Uh, I loved what it did. I loved the characters. I thought it was incredibly interesting. And it makes me want to see uh, what else they have in store for it. Awesome. I do like Loki a lot. That's probably my number two by a smidgen, maybe go with Hawkeye. So I like the show overall a lot. Uh, Loki's really good. Uh, WandaVision had its ups and downs. Josh. What is the best new TV show that you watch for 2021? Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Uh, probably Squid Game. Or, ooh, hmm. It's between Squid Game and Midnight Mass. Ah, oh, that's tough. We watched the first episode of The Trick Next Door together kind of this year. It was very good. That was good. I want to finish that. <sighs> I didn't really watch much this year, TV wise. I've seen. I've been watching so much TV this year. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with Squid Game. I love Midnight Mass. It's so good, but just something about Squid Game just like it really packed a punch for me. It was fantastic. I, I can't really answer. I don't I haven't watched enough new TV shows. Okay, Josh, what was the biggest surprise of 2021 to you? I think I'm gonna go with Venom. Let there be carnage. 
I had no expectations for this movie at all. And I was thoroughly surprised by how much I actually enjoyed it. Like legitimate enjoyed it. My biggest surprise at all was Cruella. Cruella was very like, oh, this is really fun. Yeah. I went in with like nothing and thinking, ah, oh, whatever. And like, oh, I had a really fun time. That's cool. So if you want to watch Cruella, guys, it's fun. We talked about it actually months ago on our uh, what, what do you watch recently kind of idea months we ago. Did. And lastly, on this topic, anything that you watched in 2021 for the first time that didn't release that you just ended up loving? So anything I watched in 2021 that didn't necessarily come out that year, but yeah, okay. but oh, I loved Kong Skull Island. But I mentioned that before. I thought it was really you fun. have mentioned that. Where the Wild Things uh, Are. That's for me. That's probably my biggest. You guys should all watch that. I'm going to go with, I've, I had watched this before, but I'm going to go with The Secret Life of Walter Mitty because I never like fully like, I didn't like watch it, watch it, if that makes sense. I, I think I saw it when I was like 14, but I wasn't really like paying attention to it. So like this is my first real time actually like understanding what it was and it is a fantastic film. Escape Room was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Chef, what a fun surprise for me. Loved it. Yeah. Uh, so that was the movies we watched in 2021. I'm overall excited for this year as a whole in terms of media. And we're going to have a lot more podcasts to talk about stuff. Yeah. I'm also going to make Josh Roots and Comics this year. Oh, no. You're going to make me read? How dare you? I know. And speaking of reading comics, Josh, it's time for our segment, Super Weird Stories. Wow. What is that segment, Josh? Explain it to the audience. Uh, I don't know most things about comics. Uh, I may be a nerd, but I'm not a nerd like that. And so Sean tells me every week a weird story from comics that makes me go, huh, maybe I shouldn't read comics. That's not the idea. (laughs) (laughs) The idea of this is to talk about a weird, a problematic or wholesome story related to comics or superheroes. Like we talk about stuff off the art from comic books, like Phoenix Jones or like Stan Lee's uh, reality show, Who Wants to Be a Superhero? Also weird. But today I have a, I have a book called The League of Regret- Regrettable... Nope. Words. I have The League of Regrettable Superheroes as a book. I've already done some characters before, but I'm going to one right now, who I think is very odd, which you often agree with these being very odd. They definitely are. Nightmare and Sleepy. What? <laughs> so... These are characters created by Alan Mandel and Dan Perry. Uh, there are two quotes that say, first you get sleepy, see, then you get a nightmare. <laughs> okay. You might think that the life of, an, of a professional wrestler would be su- sufficiently exciting for any individual. Traveling from town to town, testing your strength and skill in the squared circle, competing for honors and prizes awarded only to get the greatest in sport. For a career grappler, Bob White. That's a boring name. And his teenager manager. What? Why is his manager a teenager? Okay. Uh, Terry Wake. However, wrestling is only the prologue to adventure because outside the ring, they are in secret the outlandish costumed heroes, Nightmare and his kid sidekick, Sleepy. <laughs> what year was this? 1943. That makes sense. Do you want to see a picture of them? I'm so curious. Sending now. Enjoy this monstrosity. One of them looks good as a skeleton man with weird white plain underwear. Oh, oh my. Right? Look at that boy. Little blonde boy with skulls in the eyes and the shirt. Okay. What the, what the heck? So describe these people, Josh. The looks. Literally, what just looks like a very buff Jack Skellington. And then the child, I don't really know how to describe it he's just got a white unitard on uh with a skull with uh bones through the eyes like kind of like an x Uh, he's got a red cape on uh red gloves it's i don't know he's got a blue domino mask and a bit of blonde hair poking out yeah what Uh, (laughs) so decked out in a garish skeleton costume which was doused in uh phosphorescent paint as to lend him additional creep factor the burly nightmare became a symbol of terror to an assembly of weird and often seemingly supernatural foes, such as the Undertaker, an alleged medieval spirit known as the Robber Baron, and most terrifying of all, the corpse that steals living men's faces. <laughs> that's such a long name. That's a long name, but that's also on the cover here I sent you. Yeah, I saw that. Um, 
So despite appearances, neither Nightmare nor his whimsically adorned junior partner Sleepy, decked out in what appears to be a footy pajamas and a red riding hood, <laughs> boasted any supernatural or superhuman powers. So they have no powers doing this. Okay. Odd choice. Very. Life on the road sometimes left them without money, food, or a place to sleep. <laughs> so that's that problems, great. Problems Batman never had. <laughs> And halfway through their abbreviated oh wait, halfway through their abbreviated existence. <laughs> <laughs> Nightmare and Sleepy lightened the tone. That's not a, a sentence really, but okay. Tone of what? The elder partner dropped his skeleton suit for a more traditional skin tight spandex uniform, um, complete with an encircled N insignia on the chest and a pair of horns on his cowl. That's less cool. Correct. Uh, these were more than slightly reminiscent of the bat ears on another grim Avenger of the Night. Okay, so he's just copying Batman now. Cool. Likewise, the light dose of mysticism that shrouded their earlier foes dissipated, leaving Nightmare and Sleepy slug- slugging common thugs, mugs, and the occasional Nazi. <laughs> I mean, it was the 40s. Instead of fighting off corpse thieves and Sunday spirits. That's way worse. Wait, let them fight cool monsters. Ah, it's the forties. You got you gotta have the propaganda. Fight fight the knights Nazi skeleton man. The Nazis? Yes. <laughs> Look, I'm sick, man. You know this. By way of truly unusual climax to the story, Nightmare's final and solo appearance strips the hero of his backstory and reimagine him as a crime fighting genie summoned by the smoking of a hop. Wait, hold on. What? So Nightmare's last appearance, and it was solo this time. His, it reimagines his backstory as a crime-fighting genie, genie summoned by the smoking of a homemade cigar hand-wrapped by slap-happy would-be private detective Nosy McGinnis. What? <laughs> it's a weird conclusion, but with one last puff, Nightmare and Sleepy were no more. That's the entirety of the information I have in these characters. What the heck? They debuted in, in Clue Comics number one, Hillman Periodicals, January 19th, 19th. Oh, not January 19th. January 1943. So that's the characters. Um, they didn't do a lot. The 40s were a time, man. What like, do you think oh, about this story? That is just... It doesn't go anywhere you think it's going to go. No, it does not. I, that's fascinating. And so I mentioned last time we're going to have a cool guest soon. And that guest specializes often in these weird stories. So I'm going to ask if he's willing to read his own story for us this time. Next time. Ooh. So we'll see how that goes. All right. But thank you so much for this. This was a fun podcast. And thank you all for this 2021 listening. We did get a response kind of thing. We got um, a response? So my friend actually sits on in. So he listened to the podcast. And cool. He said, let's see, first off, he said, uh, he quoted you saying, sup, nerds and nerdettes. Thank you. Because that's how you opened the intro. And he also said that the Rugrats, he thinks, did do a Hanukkah movie. That's from Nathan. Oh, I think I remember that. So uh, we, should look, we should look into that and watch it for our own little, to bring up next time. Yeah, let me see. And thank you, Nathan, for that message. He also said that the anarchist side of him, once Josh did the po- opening, um, of the podcast every time, but the rational part those n- never happen again. <laughs> he's he's correct in his assessment. So thank you for our first real like actual response to the podcast. Please, people, send things in. If you want something's in, send it to nerd talk productions yt at gmail.com. Or if it's easier for you, tweet at us at ha- uh, hashtag geekspeakpod or tweet at us with at nerd talk underscore prod. Please send things in. Send in questions, comments, concerns. Want to ask us how we are? Want to call us jerks? Do it. Please do so. And then the more people respond, the more fun this will be. Yeah. Okay. So, Josh, where can people find you? Uh, YouTube at Josh Rudolph. Uh, Flarebox. That's the thing. Flarebox? Nerd for, yes. Flarebox at Nerd for Film 28. Twitter at J underscore Rudy 28. And Instagram at J underscore Rudy 16. Nice. You can find me. I run all those uh, nerd talk pages, so please follow us there at nerd underscore prod. 
head to our YouTube channel, Nerd Talk Productions. To li- you can actually watch some of the podcasts there. And if you will be a few more, you can watch as well. Besides just listening, you can uh, tweet at me at the theater nerd. Thank you all for being here. And here's to 2022 being fun. Woo! Thank you. Bye. Bye.